Happy Sabbath. How are you all? I hope you all had a wonderful week. And tonight, before we study Genesis chapter 40 and part of 41, I would like to ask our Almighty God, who had created all people and all creation, we want to give him thanks for the gift of salvation, of hope, and heavenly heritage. And to allow us to realize this hope, joy, and love coming from him. And let us open our hearts and our eyes to see him. Now let's read Genesis chapter 40, verse 1. Sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense against the Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. And he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard indicate he is Potiphar, if you look back in chapter 39, verse 1. So the captain of the guard appointed Joseph to be with them, and he attended them. They continue for some time in custody. Well, sometime after Joseph was put into prison, wrongfully convicted for assaulting Potiphar's wife, he met two Egyptian officials who also landed in prison. One was Pharaoh's cupbearer, and the other was Pharaoh's baker. They were in the prison with Joseph, probably as a result of an assassination attempt. While poisoning was the common way to eliminate a leader in those days, and poison could easily be administered through a leader's food or drink by the cupbearer and the baker. They were with Joseph. This cupbearer and baker were with Joseph in the same prison for an unknown amount of time. Let's read verse 5. And one night they both dreamed the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, each his own dream, and each dream with his own interpretation. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were troubled. So he asked Pharaoh's of officer, officers, which, is, which are the cupbearers and the baker, who were with him in custody in his master's house. Why are your faces downcast today? They said to him, We have had dreams, and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretation belong to God? Please tell them to me. So one day Joseph noticed the baker and the cupbearer's downcast appearance. That means they looked depressed. So Joseph was concerned about them. That shows Joseph was a caring person. He was concerned of the welfare of those who were under his supervision. And from here onward, we will see that Joseph the dreamer will become Joseph the dream interpreter. God gives Joseph the interpretation of two dreams which prepares the way for Joseph to be used by God to interpret the Pharaoh's two dreams and leading to subsequently fulfillment of Joseph's own two dreams back in chapter 37 of Genesis. Okay, I'm going to give you a side note about dream. You know, dreams were a frequent mode of revelation in the Old Testament. Joseph's father Jacob had a dream given by God while he was alone in Bethel. And Joseph had dreams before he was sold to Egypt. 
You know, dream was a part of the cultural belief in those days that what they dreamed about are divine revelation from their deity. Furthermore, throughout the ancient Near East, it was believed that dreams sometimes contain disclosures about the future and therefore needs a proper interpretation. Well, here, Joseph was quick to give credit to God where it belonged. Before Joseph interpreted their dreams, he said, do not interpretations belong to God? Joseph knows that only God who knows the future can properly interpret dreams. So he told the two men to tell him their dreams. He said, tell me. So Joseph presents himself as God's agent through whom God will make known the revelation contained in their dreams. Verse 9. So the chief Kabera told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream there was a vine before me, and on the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded, its blossoms shot forth, and the clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and place the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Now, let's go to the next verse. Verse 12. Then Joseph said to him, This is his interpretation. The three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office. And you shall place Pharaoh's cup in his hand as formerly when you were his cup bearer. Only remember me when it is well with you and please do me the kindness to mention me to Pharaoh. And so get me out of this house for I was indeed stolen out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also I have done nothing that they should put me into the pit. Now Joseph is no longer the dreamer. He is an interpreter of dreams. And he acknowledges that he is dependent upon God for his interpretations. Joseph told the cupbearer that Pharaoh will lift up his head and restore him to his position. Lift, meaning his head will no longer be bowed low and will be held erect again. That means no longer in shame and his head can held high again. After Joseph interpreted the first dream, a positive prediction for the cupbearer, which is the restoration of his position. And after he concluded his interpretation, he pleaded with the cupbearer to remember him when he is released and his job restored to tell Pharaoh that he is innocent. This passage tells us that Joseph can interpret dreams and he was very sure that he told the cup bearer the truth and whatever he told will come true. How do I know? Because Joseph asked a favor of the cup bearer. He told him not to forget him when he returned to his position. And then you'll see that in the next verse, when the baker's dream was interpreted, Joseph did not ask any favor of the baker. Now, verse 16. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. There were three cake baskets on my head, and in the uppermost basket, there were all sorts of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating it out of the basket on my head. Verse 16. And Joseph answered and said, This is his interpretation. 
the three baskets are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat the flesh from you. What a dreadful news. While the words lift up can mean to exalt, the dictionary said it can also mean to take away. So with the cupbearer, lift up your head means he will be exalted because Pharaoh will restore his position. But with the baker, Pharaoh will lift up his head, meaning to take his head away from him. In other words, he will be executed. Now, verse 20, on the third day, which is Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast for all his servants and lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Pharaoh's birthday may refer to his actual birthday or to the anniversary as becoming ruler. That is the occasion when pardons were more often granted. Joseph's interpretation comes true. This surely would make him think that God has not forgotten his own dream. But the cupbearer quickly forgets Joseph and his plight, showing that only God knows the timing and only he can be trusted. Now we go to chapter 41. Let's read. After two whole years, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile, Nile is the river, and behold, there came up out of the Nile seven cows, attractive and plump, and they fed in the reed grass. And behold, seven other cows, ugly and thin, came up out of the Nile after them and stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile. And the ugly, thin cows ate up the seven attractive plum cows. And Pharaoh awoke, and he fell asleep and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of grain, plum and good, were growing on the stalk. And behold, after them sprouted seven ears, thin and blighted by the east wind. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven plum full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So in the morning his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all his wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was none who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Although the cupbearer had forgotten Joseph, but God did not forget him. God had a plan, and he was about to open the prison gates. Two years after the cupbearer has been released from prison, one day Pharaoh had two dreams, and both dreams seems to be pointing to some great calamity. However, the king couldn't determine its meaning, and it troubled him so. He called the magicians and the wise men of his kingdom, but they could not come up with any interpretation. And so the king became more and more agitated. He was so distressed that everyone in the palace became worried because they knew what could happen when the king becomes angry. Right at that moment, the cupbearer remembered Joseph who interpreted his dream while he was in prison. He felt so bad about his forgetfulness and ingratitude. So he immediately informed the king about how his own dream was interpreted and, and that of the chief baker too, by a Hebrew slave. And how 
the prediction had been fulfilled. Well, it was humiliating to Pharaoh to turn away from the magicians and wise men of his kingdom to consult a foreign slave. But he was desperate and ready to accept anyone who could be of service to him by interpreting his dreams. So his troubled mind could find relief. Therefore, Joseph was immediately sent for. He put off his prison attire and shaved himself. For his hair had grown long during the period of his confinement. He was then brought to the presence of the king. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there's no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, behold, in my dream, I was standing on the banks of the Nile. Seven cows, plump and attractive, came up out of the Nile and fed in the reed grass. Seven other cows came up after them poor and very ugly and thin, such as I had never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the thin, ugly cow ate up the first seven plump cows. But when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were still as ugly as the beginning. Then I awoke. I also saw in my dream seven ears growing on one stalk, full and good seven ears wither, thin, and blighted by the east wind, sprouted after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. And I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. So here the dream was told a second times. Seven fat cows come up from the river Nile, and then after that, seven thin cows came up from River Nile. And the thin one ate the fat ones. And they were just as thin as in the beginning. Nothing has changed. And then same, the second dream was plum stalk of grain. And this plum stalk of grain was fat. There were seven of them. And then after that, it came the seven thin, long, skinny stalk of grain. But then the, the funny thing is that these seven thin, you know, long, thin stalk of grain would eat up the first seven plum ones. And that, it didn't change them. They were just as thin as before. So I'm sure you all have heard this story. But the significant thing is here is that Joseph never took credit. He said, it is not in me. The a ability to interpret dream is not in me. He said that God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So Joseph's reply to the king reveals his humility and his faith in God. He modestly disclaimed the honor of possessing in himself superior wisdom. He said, it is not in me. Now let's go to verse 25. Joseph responded, both of Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God is telling Pharaoh in advance what he is about to do. The seven healthy cows and the seven healthy heads of grain both represent seven years of prosperity. And the seven thin scrawny cows that came up later and the seven thin heads of grain Wither by the east wind represents seven years of famine. So now Joseph interpret the dream. He said that there will be seven years of prosperity and followed by seven years of famine. Verse 28. This will happen just as I have described it. For God has revealed to Pharaoh in advance what he is about to do. The next seven years will be a period of great prosperity throughout the land of Egypt. But afterward, there will be seven years of famine, so great that all the prosperity will be forgotten in Egypt. 
famine would destroy the land. This famine would be so severe that even the memory of the good years would be erased. As for having two similar dreams, it means that these events have been decreed by God, and He will soon make them happen. So Joseph explained to him that, you know, both of this dream means the same thing. And God allow you to have two dreams that predicts the same event, meaning that it's his plan. It's God's plan and it will for sure happen. And now Joseph gave Pharaoh a suggestion. Verse 33. Therefore Pharaoh should find an intelligent and wise man and put him in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh should appoint supervisors over the land and let them collect one-fifth of all the crops during the seven good years. Have them gather all the food produced in the good year that are just ahead and bring it to Pharaoh's storehouse. Store it away and guard it so there will be food in the cities. That way there will be enough to eat when the seven years of famine come to the land of Egypt. Otherwise, this famine will destroy the land. So Joseph not only told Pharaoh what was about to happen according to the dream, but more importantly, he advised Pharaoh how to prepare for what was about to come. So God had given Joseph wisdom not only to interpret dreams, but also wisdom to deal with the forecast situations, which are the years of prosperity and years of famine. In another word, after God revealed to Joseph the mysteries of the dreams, he also taught Joseph how to plan and administer the forthcoming situation accordingly. So is there anything for us to learn in this narrative? The dreams, the order of the occurrence were all providential, were planned by God. See, if Joseph were to interpret the baker's dream first, the cupbearer would avoid asking Joseph to interpret his dream because he would be afraid to get the same bad news like the baker did, right? And if the cupbearer's dream was not interpreted, the cupbearer would not introduce Joseph to Pharaoh. And Joseph would not have the opportunity to interpret Pharaoh's dream. And if Joseph didn't interpret Pharaoh's dream, he would not be able to offer suggestions, right? And he would not become the important ruler that he eventually became in Egypt. And the result? Many people, including Jacob's entire family, would probably die of hunger during the severe famine. God sees the big picture. We cannot. And Joseph, through thick and through thin, he was consistently loyal and obedient to God. His suffering didn't make him leave God. While he was sold as a slave to merchants, the merchants, he wept, he mourned because he missed his father, he missed his home. But instead of complaining, why me? He turned to his father's God. Now I would quote from the book, Patriots and Prophet. In his childhood, talking about Joseph, he had been taught to love and fear God. Often in his father's tent, he had listened to the story of the vision that Jacob saw as he fled from his home as an exile and a fugitive. He had been told of the Lord's promises to Jacob and how they had been fulfilled. The angels of God had come to instruct, comfort, and protect him. And he had learned of the love of God in providing for men a redeemer. Now all these precious lessons came vividly before him. Joseph believed that the God of his father would be his God. He then, 
gave himself fully to the Lord. And he prayed that the keeper of Israel, his father, would be with him in the land of his exile. So what can we learn from Joseph? No matter what circumstances we are in, we are a subject of the King of Heaven. We are to serve our Lord with undivided heart. We would meet our trials with fortitude and to faithfully perform our every duty regardless. One day's experience can become turning point in our lives. Calamity can transform us as it had transformed Joseph from a pamper spoiled child to a man, a thoughtful, courageous, and self-assured man. Happy Sabbath. And next week, we will continue with the narrative.